Hey, you got DJ and Fell. Uh, fe- the camera should switch to Fell. Hi, how are you? There we go. It's working. But really, what we're, we are pretty excited because uh, one of our listeners has noticed that there is quite a similarity in the two of you, actually. I, I've, I've got to say, yes, Ari- Ariel, w- welcome to the to the to the show. Uh, <laughs> I've just got to say, uh, all of Australia is watching, listening. I've had six or seven people thinking they're very, very clever over the last couple of weeks since you've released, since Unspoken has released their new singles, new photos, and everything like that. If I get one more person saying that I didn't know you're in the band playing drums for uh, Unspoken, <laughs> uh, I, this is why we've set up this interview. This is all just to set up this interview to say well, that we're not listen. the same person. Well, no, no, listen, hold on, hold on a second. Hmm. I'm going to fix this right away. Okay, give me one second. Uh, <laughs> Okay, for those listening, Ariel has got up, he's, he's moving, he's, he's away from his drums right now. I love the drums behind him yeah, in the he's video. Yeah, he's got, oh, we can see some, uh, you know, platinum records, mm. gold records on the wall, uh, looking good. He's, uh, he's coming back over. Hang on, hang oh. on. He's a- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are completely, this is like Spy- uh, Superman now. I, I wouldn't know who you are. <laughs> he's changed his glasses, entirely different person. Yeah, we are not the oh, same person. I- no, but you know what? It was the joy of my afternoon here in Nashville to have a person that looked just like me. <laughs> you are a beautiful man of God. Oh. Look, I, I feel the same way. A very handsome, attractive oh, man no. here. here we- <laughs> There's two of them. Watch out, world. Ariel, though, is there a chance you do you need to step away at some point and get DJ on the Listen, drums for I, you? As long as you pre-record the drums, I, I can fake it, but I can't actually play. So, you know. You could you could do that for That's us right. there. Uh, it's, yeah. an, it's an absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. Now, uh, help us. I'm the worst. I don't have any accents in me whatsoever, oh. other than the dopey Australian accent. How do I pronounce? Oh, that's unfair uh, to Australia. Well, uh, Ariel Mundet, how do I pronounce your name properly? Because you pronounce it in such the sweet Hispanic way. Okay, you you say it. How do you think it sounds? Ariel Munez. Uh, <laughs> what about Ariel Mandoz? Oh, She's just to, woo! my girl! That's it. There you go. <laughs> All right, you get you get you get the Hispanic pass over there. <laughs> if you go from uh, uh, I'm you know I'm Puerto Rican from yes. a tiny island in the Caribbean, so they call me Ariel Munoz. Munoz. Oh, Munoz. Munoz. Oh, Munoz. You can practice that. Ariel. Ariel. I'm out. I'm out already. Munoz. Yeah, I can say it like Steve it, Irwin. That's about it. The crocodile hunter saying, Ariel Minaj over here, mate. That's about it. <laughs> <as good as, laughs> that's about it. That it's not going to do the job. No. Hey, but in all, in all seriousness, uh, absolutely loving. We love you guys. Love Unspoken. Uh, 10 years of your ministry. I remember when your single, the first single came out, would be about 12 years ago now. And then that first album launched about 10 years ago. You've been with the band, part of the band, right from the very beginning with the, you know, with yes, the two, two main boys there. The songwriters the the, new, the two new songs that i've just heard you bring out uh i'm going to go out there and say it two of my favorites that you've done i literally played on the show yesterday didn't know this interview was happening where my joy comes from uh because i think that is one of the i know it's just brand brand new i'm sort of jumping the gun here because i know you're talking about the previous single it's one of my favorite things that you guys have ever done really thank you so much it's 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 a very fun song and, yeah. and that was the whole purpose of that song was do something fun so it's funny because i every time i listen to that song i just want to jump in my pool <laughs> i want to go back there and just boom just like, play the song many times you know awesome awesome uh well you you are here officially to talk about the the latest single that is out right now across everywhere what he says about you mm. uh an amazing song great lyrics you got the rock you know vibe happening in there a bit bit more crunchy uh from your mm. perspective as a drummer coming in you know you've got these two guys writing amazing songs how do you feel like you know uh, you know the, as a musician coming into this you know uh, spiritual band and these two powerhouses writing what uh, you know do you get to add your flavor to it do you get to give them some focus do you go we need to do something like this what do you bring into the game totally um how we how we do the writing sessions like chad and john which is the bass player that uh, we all three of us been here the longest 21 years uh 22 21 and 20 i'm so tw- i've been 20 here for 20 years wow they 
put the concept writing together and the producers do you know what they think will be a good fit rhythm wise and we brought they bring it to the table and that's where the magic comes you know? that's <laughs> we, we said, man i think we should play this like uh 80s rock oh. you know so let's do it let's rock and roll you know we're close to the summer yes. the release is going to be right on the right on the top of the summer so let's do this that's fun you know yeah yeah Okay, so it's more about the musical side of production and stuff like that. Do you ever go, do you ever come to the party and go, I think we should do, like you said there, 80s rock, and you do it, and then yeah. you all look at each other and go, nah, it's not it's not working. We need to try a different tactic. Or uh, how does it, how do you flesh it out like that in the studio? Well, when you're the boss, you try to push as much as you can, you know? <laughs> it will be 80s rock. <laughs> it always works. Is there ever a bad time for no, that? No, no, Ariel's there's saying. never a bad time for 80s rock at, at all. But are you, so, uh, so, so, Ariel, you're saying that you're the boss from behind the drums back there. You're, you're calling the shots. That's the only thing I call the shots behind the drums. <laughs> well done. That, I'm useless, you know? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but, yeah, it, it, it's the good thing is, like, when you put our band together and uh, – it, it's funny because there's not that many bands out there anymore. But uh, when you put a band together, you got, I love the 80s and I love Latin jazz. That's my Ooh. background. Oh, you have Chad. Chad is 90s hip hop <laughs> and boys to men. Go feed. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't have picked that. Him because of that. John. Which is the other writer? He's more Americana. He's more uh, singer-songwriter type of thing. Yes. You know, smarty pants. Yeah. <laughs> you need one of those nerds on your team. Yes, you do. And then you have the young African American uh, keyboard player Matt, which is he's a beast, mm. and he's half my age. So that says it all there. <laughs> but he's full of energy. He's gospel guy. So we have, and then when you bring the guitar player, it, it, it's crazy, man. I I cannot believe that we can do music together mm. with such a diverse background. Mm. It, it's, un, it's unbelievable. Cause, and when we never fight about, like, oh, man, I think that, what do you think about, oh, dude, how, what do you think about this? Oh, man, mm. I was thinking about this approach. It's a, whoo, voila. Yeah. So I think that chemistry, when there's chemistry, uh, it, it's easier. I, I love think. it. I love it. I love it. Now, you guys are one of the hardest working bands out there. I know, I know uh, you know, you're out there touring at the moment, literally doing shows all over the place in the States. First Ooh. question, First que I've got two questions for you. First question is, I don't see Australia on the tour dates here. What's going on? <laughs> well, I was thinking the same thing. I'm doing all these, uh, these interviews in Australia. I was like, man, <laughs> why we haven't been in Australia yet? It's been, I've been doing this 20 years. We've been in the radio for 10, over 12 years. And we've never been in Australia. Oh, I want to do it. Come on down. Yes, let's go. Do you know anybody that you know, can bring up? <laughs> All right, I'm making a note. Yeah, DJ, a note. write we've, that down. We've just had Jeremy Camp uh, come down, did a successful tour. We Are Messengers came down, did a great tour. And uh, yeah. blowing all of them away has just been for King & Country doing their homecoming tour. Oh. They, Bro, they, yeah. What a great ministry. Those, exactly. Oh, God. Man. Yeah. I, so, I start using mate. I even start using mate. Oh, well, you <laughs> are. Good to go. Hey. You're perfect. You'll fit right look, in. They've warmed up the crowds now, so yeah. it's a good time exactly. to come. Exactly. We're exactly. warmed up, ready to go. Uh, the, the the second question that I've that I've got a little bit more personal in, in looking up and following uh, you guys as a band. I know you had a bit of a health scare a little while ago, yourself personally. How, how's how's things travelling? Uh, you said I didn't understand that. You said last. Uh, you uh, had a, you had, yeah. You had a bit of a health health scare. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 health scare. I'm sorry. Yeah yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, man, I got COVID really bad, and uh, and that was that was. <laughs> he put me in a hospital for uh, five weeks. Wow! It was uh, the best diet, the best yeah. diet that I ever <laughs> in my life. I lost fifty four pounds. Oh my goodness. In a month. Wow! And I, uh, yeah, two a week and a half in the hospital, I almost lost my life. Wow! Uh, my oxygen level went to seventy six one night, and uh, we thought that. Uh, we thought that that was it, that, but uh, it was a, it's crazy because you know you're by yourself. Uh, people who come in in the room, you cannot even see their face expression because they're all covered oh, with this old yeah. PPP, whatever they call it, and uh, it's so depressing. I it took me um, longer 
to cure my head. I'm still, you know, I still have some issues, you know, with my breathing system still that I never had before that. Um, but mentally, man, it was brutal, brutal. Cause you, I didn't want to watch TV, the news, cause everything that we're doing is account how many people were dying. Mm. Uh, I call friends, all the texts you guys, Oh man, this guy passed away. This guy passed away. This guy passed away. And, uh, and you know, the, it's, it's so scary, man. And then by yourself, you know, the, on my worst time, I'm aware when my oxygen went really low, it was a Thursday, um, around 3 a.m. in the morning. I was, I thought I was dreaming that I was just drowning in a pool mm. and it was that I have no oxygen on me. So I start, I start, I was panicked because I couldn't, you know, everybody in the room was breathing air and you cannot breathe the same air. So it was, it was totally a crazy, crazy, you know, experience. And, uh, at that moment, I can only, and, and the worst, when the doctor come in, so I say, well, you know, they bring the intubation machine, the ventilator. Mm. Um, doctor said, I, I got to call your wife. Oh. We got to call, we got to call your wife. You know, I said, so, so, no, 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 no. Then I started getting panic. I jump off the bed and I'm six feet, you know, 270 pounds. So this guy thought that I was going to jump on here or something. So the nurse jumped in and said, no, 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 no. Sit down, sit down, relax, just relax. You know, it's an aerial, please relax. I can't breathe, man. Mm -hmm. My yuck is leaving my body. So I can't breathe. I can I can't function. At that point, I remember three things. My kids, mm -hmm. my wife, mm -hmm. and God. Mm -hmm. I I don't remember anything. I don't remember car music business uh maturing i don't the, the only things that i had in my head was my kids my wife mm -hmm. and god mm -hmm. they weren't there the first two which just broke my heart the only one that was in that room was god mm -hmm. so uh, the only thing i could i said listen i just need peace i mean an agony here i need peace because if i die at least i die in peace you know mm -hmm. that's it but i, I need peace and man, after that little prayer, we know it just, but that little prayer like that, I just need peace, God, please. Man, I pass out sitting on that chair. I just went and I went sleep in that chair without my oxygen was quitting my body and I, I fell asleep. So my, uh, my, um, the nurse wake me up, Ariel, go to bed. Listen, look, look, look at the oxygen went up. You know, it went to 78, 79, mm -hmm. which is usually keep going down. And the ladies, you know, the, the intubation machine is already unpacked and everything. And uh, she, yeah, go to bed, nothing going to happen. So you go to bed, I'll be here. Man, God bless nurses mm -hmm. through, through that. Because it, it, was, it was amazing, man. It was crazy. Um, and then when she put me in bed on my side, I I fell asleep again, and I don't. I wake up at seven a.m. in the morning. After and my oxygen wasn't all the way up there, but but it was 82, 85. Mm -hmm. You know, at least I was wow. I was getting some breathing. Wow, uh, man! Uh, I asked the lady later uh, how long I was sleeping. You know, when I was in the chair, because he felt like I was sleeping for hours. And now you was like two minutes. <laughs> oh wow. wow! We thought that you would die because you were dying. <laughs> So we thought you were passing out. So the doctor almost pulled you on the floor and intubated. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. by the grace of God, man, yeah, we're amen. here now, right, brother. Oh, I, 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 I know we've run out of time here, Ariel. You've been so generous with your time. But I've, one last question: going through that experience, how does that change your approach to the music? How does that change your approach to the band? Well, it gave me a right perspective that my main priority is, is God, my wife, and then music. Yeah. As far as I keep those priorities in the and that in that order, we'll be fine. Yeah. The band will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Family will be fine. You know. Yeah. And I can keep meeting beautiful people like you, man, that look like me. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully there aren't too many more out there. <laughs> <laughs> two is plenty. Yeah, God, God, God can't populate too many of us beautiful people around the world here, buddy. But listen, we would... Yeah, no, that's 
That's why there are only a few of us. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, l- thank you so much for your time. Uh, would love to have you guys down in Australia. Would love to support you guys in any w- way. And any time you've got anything new coming out, we'd love to cover it here on the show. We're massive Unspoken fans. So thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. That's my, my pleasure. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure meeting you guys and see that I have a reflection of a personality there in Australia. So I'm looking forward to meeting you, brother. We'll we'll make a date. We'll make a date for sure. For sure. (laughs)